Well, I want to continue where we started last week, speaking about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And we talked about last week that if you seek first the kingdom of God, all things will be added to you. And Jesus was telling us this when he was speaking in Matthew 6, 33. So that's the verse, Matthew 6, 33. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Now, Jesus was talking, explaining that the Father knows that you have need of all these things. The Father knows what you need in your life, not only to survive, but to accomplish what he put in your heart. So the Father already knows those things. So he's saying, when you seek the kingdom, where all things are already provided, and you seek God's righteousness, you seek God, then everything else, Everything else in the physical world is just provided. Now, this is a new wrinkle for us. We don't think this way. We think we have to focus on the things that we want to add. We focus on the end result. We live in a world that says, look at the end result. Look at what you need and do what you can to accomplish those things to get the desired result. But Jesus is saying, where the world looks at the end, I want you to come back here to the beginning and do it this way. This is how we operate our lives as believers. As believers, we don't do the things that the world does. We do things totally opposite. So, it does take some effort to do it because we're not used to living that way. We're not used to thinking that way. We don't always come to the Father and in His presence and in the glory and just think about what's already there in the kingdom. We don't always do it, but God is saying first in the morning, for example, come before Him, come into His presence, think about what is already there. That's grace, right? What is already provided. Actually spend time seeking that because you know you're going to find what you seek. Seek and you shall find. The word says that. But Jesus is telling us this is the way it works. The first thing you do is this, and then you'll get everything that's in your heart that you know you need, you know you want. Don't do it like the world. Do it this way, because this is how it works. So we're going to believe today, let's believe together, okay, that this becomes more real to us that we start operating our lives differently, where in the morning or every part of the day, first we're thinking, wow, this has all been provided to me. Think about the things. And then think about Jesus, how beautiful, how lovely, and the Father, how much he loves you. Then, and then you'll see, wow, how did that happen? Well, because Jesus said, if you seek first the kingdom, all these things are added. And we get surprised. I don't know, I've just been relaxing and just like believing, and uh, things have just happened. Oh, well, it's right there, right? But we don't always go right there and say, well, of course, Jesus was telling me the truth. The reason he wrote it down, he said, Matthew, are you writing this down? Yes, yeah. sure I do. <laughs> well, good, because they need to know. They need to know. But, you know, it says in Hebrews 4.11, you have to labor to get into the rest. That sounds wrong. Labor to rest? Am I exhausted or am I resting? <laughs> But we have to put effort into it because our minds say, okay, well, I need X amount of dollars by the end of the month, so are we gonna do that? You're gonna start talking about Sam? What is it? Do we have a plan? Do we have a plan? We work that, right? But we have to work at what Jesus is saying. You know, we first see this in the beginning of creation where God created the whole world in seven days. What a deal. So in seven days, he created everything. On the seventh day, he rested. So the first five days, right, he made everything, all things that man would need. He thought it through. All that they would ever need. Okay, 
I'm gonna put this together, that together, I'm gonna make this, you know, trees will produce the wrong kind, fruits produce the wrong kind, all that. He thought it all through. And then he said, okay, now it's ready. It's all ready. So on the sixth day, he created man in his image and his likeness. He created us, knowing that it's all done. Everything they'll ever need for the rest of their lives is already done. And then he rested. Not because he was tired, maybe he needed to put his feet up. It's like, whew. But no, he rested. Like in a court of law, say, I rest my case, I'm done. There's nothing else I can do to make it any better. It was perfect. It was perfect. And so this is what Jesus is saying. You have to labor into it because you're, you're, you have an enemy. He's got gates. We talked about this. There's giants. But the giants have to flee. But there are gates. But the gates won't prevail. And there are weapons, but the weapons, the weapons won't prevail. The gates will not hold you back. The weapons won't prosper. The gates won't prevail. But they're there. And that's why we have to labor and to come to the Word. Just come to the Word. And then, and then seek first, and all of a sudden, things open. Things open. You know, Jesus even said um, in, in Matthew eleven twelve, 12, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. He's talking about a violent resolve. Be committed to it. No, this is what I said. This is how it really works. This is how I want you to conduct your lives. Because this is how it works. But Jesus wouldn't have said. He wouldn't have told. Write it down. It wouldn't, the Holy Spirit wouldn't have confirmed it. He wants us to run our lives this way where we come to him first for all circumstances, in all situations. But you've got to be willing to force the enemy out of the way. And force the flesh to begin the process. And then it gets easier. And it's like, any habit takes a little effort. We know that Jesus taught us in Matthew 6, 9, when the disciples asked him, well, how do we pray? What do we pray for? What are we supposed to pray for? Teach us. And Jesus said, in this manner, you pray. This is how you pray. Our Father. It's our Father as believers. We have one Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be thy name. Then do your part to say, thy kingdom come. Thy will in heaven be done on earth right here in my life as it is in heaven. It's our place to do that. And the church, you know, the religious have taught us just to say the prayer, you know, when you come on the confessional because, you know, that's just what you do. But Jesus is saying, no, I've given you as the believers the dignity and the responsibility to decide what you experience, to be my ambassadors, to call forth the kingdom to come here. So we have to speak it on our knees, you know, or in your prayer closet, wherever you go, and you speak that the kingdom comes into your life, that God's will that is in heaven, God's will is for you to be blessed. God's will is for you to be happy. God's will is for the desires in your heart to come to fruition. God's kingdom has love and peace and joy and riches and, you know, he wants you to make that come. So you call it to come into your, your life, into your family, into your marriage, into your relationships, into every area, along with your will. Right? I call the kingdom into my body and your will that I'm fully healed and healthy. In Jesus' name. This is how we're supposed to pray. Jesus taught us this. And he also taught us about the kingdom. Now the kingdom, we there's the kingdom of God, but there's also another kingdom. We have to be aware of the kingdom. A kingdom means where the king's domain is. The king's domain, where the king rules. So in heaven, the king of kings, the lord of lords, Jesus, is ruling over the place. And that's why it's beautiful, and that's why it's healthy, and that's why everyone's happy and joyful. But it's not the same down here. Remember, we talked about this, is that Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. He told Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. If it was, they would fight actively for me. But he was saying, there's two kingdoms here. There's two kingdoms. Wherever there is stealing, killing, and destroying, Jesus isn't ruling over that. 
The kingdom of God is not over that because it couldn't exist. But we have two kingdoms going on that we need to be aware of. Because there's one kingdom that we're called to make come, and there's another kingdom that we're commanded, we can command to make go. Some religion has taught us, you know, that God is just control of everything. He is in control of all things, and if it's his will, then it'll happen. If it's not, then it's okay, and I'm just going to sit by and wait and see what happens. But Jesus said, no, that's not the way it works. You have the authority. The reason Jesus gave us all authority over all the works of the enemy is because he intended us to use them. That means the kingdom is real, it's there, but you have the authority to make it leave your life. Disease, you can speak against it. When you do speak against it, it must flee. That is the rule of the kingdom of God. You have that authority. But you can't say, well, it's just not real. You know, it's just that God's in control of everything and I'm just gonna sit back and I'm just gonna wait. No, that's what the devil wants you to think, that God's in control of everything because then you'll never speak against him. You'll never cast him out. You'll never tell him to get and don't come back. He wants you to think, oh, yeah, that's not me. I'm not here. But Jesus said there's, a, there's two kingdoms, right? We know that in Colossians 1.13, it says, For we have been rescued from the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of light. So as believers, we've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness. Does it rule over us anymore? And we have the kingdom of God in us and around us. So we partake of the kingdom of light, but we're called to call it down. It says in 1 John 5, 19, we know that we are children of God and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we have two kingdoms to be aware of. We have two kingdoms that we need to be aware of because we operate down here on this earth where right now the enemy, the devil, rules over the people, the unbelievers in other circumstances. But there comes a time where Jesus, of course, and we're coming to the end of the age, where Jesus comes back and he will rule the entire earth. We know that. And that'll be a great time where there will be no more need for us to use our authority against the enemy, because the enemy will not be around. Jesus taught about the kingdom with Nicodemus. You know, Nicodemus was one of the Jewish leaders that listened to Jesus. He started to understand, maybe there's some truth there, you know, and so he sneaks to go see Jesus at night. And Jesus starts to tell him that you need to be born again. You need to be born not just by water, not just at, from a woman, but you also need to be born in the spirit. And we know Nicodemus didn't understand. It says, how do I be born again and go in, back into my mother's womb? And he wasn't really getting it. Well, Jesus made it even more confusing, but it's awesome, where he says this in verse 13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who has come down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. So Nicodemus was confused at that point. After this, he's like, okay, so... What are, in my mother's womb, okay, I don't get that. And now, so Jesus is here, he's talking to me, but he says he's in heaven. But we know that the two kingdoms are here at this time. Jesus was saying, I'm here, I'm on this earth, but I'm not of this earth. In fact, even right now, Nicodemus, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven, the heavenly realm. Well, that doesn't make sense, that can't be right. Well, Jesus said it, right? And to confirm it, we know if we look at like Ephesians 2 6, we, right now, each one of us, are seated in heavenly places, far above all principalities, powers, and might, in the throne room next to Jesus, in the Spirit. So the real you has this connection to heaven. This real you has this connection to the kingdom. Just like Jesus. There's two kingdoms. You are from the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. And operating here on earth. We were made to do this. This is the way that we should run our lives from this point on as we get more and more knowledge. And the more you live this way, the more that you see God will just overtake you with the blessings 
He just wants us to understand the word is true, and you don't understand it completely. It's not for the rational mind, it's for the spirit. So these, this is how it works. He wants us to get this today by revelation in our hearts. So we start to live our lives this way. We start to plan, okay, this is how I conduct my life. This is what I do. This is what I seek first. We are children of God, as many as received Jesus. He made us to be sons and daughters. He's qualified you to be able to live, to represent him here on earth. Man, it's a great deal. Without the enemy trying to confuse us and keep us, I don't know, it sounds good, but no, Jesus said it's true. The word of God is alive, it's spirit. Jesus meant what he said. And we have to trust, just like the worship songs, we have to trust. Oh, this is beyond what I can understand, but Jesus said it. The word of God is true. I'm going to start living this way. I'm going to spend time thinking of all that God has for me. Not what I think I'm worthy of. Not what I think I should accomplish. But what does God say about me? What does God say about my life? What does God say about my spouse? What does God say about the person he wants me to be with? What do you say about the job? You know, what do you... This is how it works. This is how Jesus is explaining that it works. We need to come humbly to him and to participate. You know, there's a story about James and John. They listen to Jesus about this, and they're like, oh, Jesus talked about the kingdom more than anything, about the kingdom. And so they listen, and they start to get, you know, they probably talk to their mother about it, apparently, right? What do you think, Mom? Oh, yeah, let's, let's, yeah, I think. So the mother comes, right, and she comes to Jesus, and she bows down, and she says, you like my sons, right? They're really good. They're working hard for you. And she asks, it says here, the mother of Zebedee's sons come to him with her sons, kneeling down, asking something of him, and, and he said to her, what do you wish? She said to him, grant that these two sons of mine may sit one on your right hand and one on your left hand in your kingdom, right? We're always looking for a position. We're always looking for a place. And you know, they were all for it. They're like, yeah, all right. You know, what it says afterwards, you know, first he said, you don't really know what you're asking for. And then he says, well, I can't even, it's up to the father, right? But you know, it's funny, the disciples, the rest of them, they're all mad at them. Because they're probably thinking, I want the left. I want the right. And you know, I can get my mom to come. You know, she'll come. That's all it takes. But you know, Jesus finally gets them together afterwards and he says, the truth is, in the kingdom of God, those that serve, he says here, for you, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord over them. For those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it is not that way among you. But whoever shall become great in the kingdom will be your servant. So, it's a whole different, it's the opposite of what we think, right? When you want to partake of the kingdom, you want to serve. You want to give humbly. God can use that. You want to be great. You want to be used. You want to have authority. Become a servant. Be willing to, oh, I'm going to do it because God wants to touch these people. God wants them to be, what can I do for you? You make yourself available to God. He wants a vessel he can work through. So if you're willing to go like this and not like this, then you can say, I get something out. I get something to the people. I get something to the world through you. Because you're willing to say it, to give, to touch, to just give a kind word, to give something out. It's the way we're supposed to be thinking. The world will not tell you that. The world is like, oh, you just got to get, 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 get. If you don't get yours, no one's going to help you and all this stuff. No. Jesus said it's not the way. You want to be great? Become a servant. Become a servant, and I can work with you. I can use that. I can touch people, and they'll come back to you. You're opening up the kingdom to yourself. There's another time where the disciples said, so, well, who's the greatest? The still, right? They want to find out. Who's the greatest? Still, yeah, I get it, but who's the greatest? <laughs> Jesus says, he takes a young kid, he said, bring the, he, he calls them over. And he tells the disciples, 
You have to become, you have to be converted, he says. You have to be converted and become as a little, like little children. What he's saying here is that a young child just says, of course, my parents are going to provide. Of course this is going to happen, right? You have to be dependent on God, he's trying to say. You have to be God-dependent. Like a child doesn't think, well, I think I have to go mow some lawns so that I can get some money and then go to the supermarket and I can buy something so I can cook dinner tonight. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, my mom's going to bring me down. I mean, this is going to happen. Right? We, just, we just know, as a child, you, you knew, well, of course. And you expected it. You expected, say, uh, you know, if mom doesn't cook three meals, you're like, something's not right. <laughs> I mean, what's going on, right? We need to be that way. Of course. When I'm, I'm seeking the kingdom, I'm seeking a relationship with God, of course. I'm dependent on him, of course he's going to provide for me. This is the mindset Jesus is saying. He brought... Brought you into the world. So the, the, well, the, the adults that thought they knew everything, oh yeah, I want to be courageous, I want to be, I want to be on the left, I want to be on the right. <laughs> no, be like this, where you're totally dependent, where you expect from your father, and it's all going to be provided. It's all going to be provided. But we need to understand that as we go and as we learn and as we participate and as we share, some people are just not going to get it, and some people are going to reject us, but that's part of it. Okay, we have to do it anyway because the enemy will use the rejection to say, oh, well, then, yeah, it just that sounds good. I may, might be right and everything, but I'm not going to do it because people don't like me and they're not going to take it. So when you go out and you teach these, you start and go out and give. And then someone treats you badly. You're like, I'm not doing that. But it's not about the flesh, it's about the spirit. You've sown something. You know, there's a, there's a time where the disciples, again, James and John, it's good day, I guess. James and John are walking with Jesus. The disciples are walking with Jesus and they're heading to Jerusalem. It's at the very end of Jesus' ministry, about six months before he goes to the cross. So he's walking to Jerusalem and he goes by Samaria. And he's going by Samaria. And we know Samaria, two years prior to this, he met the woman at the well and the woman was, you know, he told the woman, he prophesied and word of knowledge. And then they brought the village. So a lot of people knew him, and we believe a lot of people were saved, but still the Samar Samaritans and the Jews didn't get along. So after Jesus left, apparently they got amongst themselves and said, we don't trust them, we don't believe what they believe. Right? So we're, anyway, so the story is they're walking along, and the disciples say, hey, Jesus is in town. He's going to come, he wants to talk, and they totally rejected him. Right? Says, now it came to pass... This is in Luke 9, 51 through 56. Now it came to pass, when the time had come for him to be received, that he steadfastly set his face to go towards Jerusalem, and set messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him, because his face was set to go to Jerusalem. So they knew he's a Jew. He really, you know, they're saying this, right? that he doesn't really agree with us, so we're going to just reject him. He can't come. Forget it. And so what's the, what's the option, right? So they're there. They're trying to do the right thing. They're trying to spread the word. They're trying to, like, we're trying to go out. And what happens? So they get rejected. So what did James and John? Here's what they, they figure out. This would be a good idea. So they, it says, and, and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Come on! Let's do it. Right? Elijah did it. They're like, Elijah did it. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Can we do it? And Jesus is like, what is wrong with you people? He says, but he turned and rebuked them. You know, he's like, it doesn't say to my Jesus rebuked. He's like, what is wrong with you too? You do not know what the manner of spirit you are. They were going into the flesh doing what the, that the enemy wanted to do and to confirm it, it says, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives. Thank you very much. But to save them. It's the enemy that kills, steals, and destroys. 
So even if we get rejected, even if things don't seem to be going great, oh, I haven't received it yet, it's still in the process. It's a process of happening, right? We don't go and just say, well, that didn't work, so now I'm gonna call down the funnel. That's it, I'm going over to work for the enemy. We wanna make sure we know there's two kingdoms, we wanna stay in one. And when we step in the other, we all do it, we have to realize, what am I doing in this? What am I doing here? Why am I ready to do something that I don't wanna do? <laughs> get back, get back in the kingdom already. Right? We know that God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. And what that's saying is, it's up to you. If you're like, listen, they rejected Jesus. They rejected, I was just trying to preach the word. I'm gonna call down the boom, and it's it's right. You know, I'm, I'm gonna take action in the physical. I'm gonna come against it. That's pride. That's why God can't work with that because you're all full of yourself. I like to say it that way. If you're full of yourself, you can't get no room for the kingdom to come. Humbly, it's like, they rejected Jesus. What should I expect? I'm going to do it anyway. Oh, because they need to know. They need to know the truth. Yeah, and I sowed a seed anyway. Even if they didn't get it, I know I sowed a seed. And yes, trees grow on top of rocks. So we won't. We need to become receptive, right? The people that receive the kingdom so that we can give it out. That's what we're here to do. We're here to live God's plan. He tells us in the Word. We're starting to learn. I believe today there's an impartation, if you will. God is calling us in these end times to start to live our lives according to the kingdom principles. To kick out the old plan. doesn't matter who sold you on that plan. We could all blame our parents and why did you sell me on that plan? That's all backwards and wrong. Throw it out. Sign up for the new plan. Right? And say, I'm starting to live this way. I'm going to see the face of Jesus in the morning, every time I want something, I'm gonna come first. I'm not even gonna tell him what I'm asking for, because he already knows. I'm gonna sit with him, it's not wrong, but stop where you seek the kingdom, you think of it. Wow, what's in heaven right now? We all know what's in heaven, right? We wanna go there someday, we don't wanna be hit by a garbage truck to get there, but we, wanna, we all know at some point, we're gonna to get to heaven, and it's gonna be awesome. People are happy there. People are joyful. People are full, filled with glory. I mean, that's available here, yeah. But you have to seek it because you're the ones that choose. You have the dignity of choice. And it does come. It may have to come through some veils and some things, but that's okay. When you call it, it comes. Jesus does not lie. He's promising you this is how it works. Think of the kingdom and all the beautiful things in heaven. Think how much the righteousness of God, think how much God loves you. Not whether you're worthy or if you love yourself or enough people love you or if they think you know, you're worthy. How much does God, how much do you love me? And by putting yourself in that position, you become someone who can receive. And then you give out. And then it just comes. It's just endless. You can't lose. But you've got to go by the word of God. Because this is, I mean, you know, we have a plan. We have the book. We just have to read the plan and just live by it. I mean, it's really a piece of cake, but we have to labor into it because the enemy has gates in your life. He's got the giants and he's got some weapons, but none of them are any good. They all have to be, the, the enemy must flee. Whether it's a giant, they gotta go. If you stand up and you say, tell it to go, you say the kingdom is here. The kingdom of God is at hand. The gates will open. You will go through. You will get to where God wants you to go. The weapons will not prosper. They're formed. They will not prosper. The gates won't prevail. This is a promise. This is a promise. So today, let's agree together in this moment, right now. All of us here and all the rest that should be here, that we're changing today, that we're going to receive the kingdom and what the kingdom says. So, Father, we just praise you today in this place. Yes. Oh, we thank you, Lord, that today we're not going to be the same, that this uh, word, your words that went forth, Lord, it's just it's changing us right now. It's changing us. we become kingdom people sold out to what the word of God says, what you say to us. We're going to start living by seeking you, seeking all the blessings that are already there provided for us. And we just know, because your word is true, that all things will come. 
all the blessings will come. So we just uh, thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you. And we seal this blessing upon us, each one of us today. And you'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen.